Welcome, my name is Ray and this is Ray Whitby Creations. In this video I'm going to be laser engraving plywood, large sheets of plywood. In fact, much larger than the engraving area of this laser. So stick around to find out how this Niji 3 Max can light up your engravings. My workshop is small and I have to squeeze everything in, then rotate it about for space. So for this laser, the enclosure had to go, at least whilst I was doing the filming. Niji are not paying me or sponsoring me for this video, so it's going to be an honest appraisal from a beginner operator. I had cut down some 6mm sheets of ply in keeping the height about 80cm and the length 120cm, because that's about all I could fit in to my workshop, but the approach will work for much longer pieces. Now, pass through laser engraving is not new, and I'm using Light Burn, which has a great utility for aligning targets of overlapping sections, especially useful for oversized engravings. But I felt using some parallel guides would make things a little easier, which it did given the slight issue of the E40 laser module when trying to align the target areas. But more on that later. I checked for any lateral movement of the sheet between the guides, and also that the plywood can be fully moved. And once in position, I could then screw in the guides. I also screwed down the plywood to the worktop, as the engraving was going to be taking place over several sessions, and there was always the chance of accidentally knocking it. Now I'm going to be engraving in three overlapping sections to cover the 120cm length of plywood. And of course, this approach can be used to engrave much wider sheets, assuming that there is sufficient area to move such a lengthy material through the laser engraving frame. I run a quick engraving in the margins, just to double check that the system settings were appropriate for the hardwood ply, and also that the alignment was uh, at least appearing accurate. But then I actually needed something to engrave. Decided that for the first time of trying to print something oversized, it was best to choose a fairly simple image. We have a map on our dining room wall that had generated a lot of interest from visitors over the years, especially when trying to identify incorrectly labelled countries or those countries that were missing. Replicating the map was fairly straightforward, and of course the procedure would depend on your chosen programme but basically each country shape is formed loosely around the letters that make up the name. Unfortunately, some countries were too small geographically or had too longer names that it would actually diminish the overall effect to keep them in. So I apologize for their non-inclusion. And if the ambassador to each missing country would like to fly me to their nation in order to formally apologize, please get in touch as soon as possible and also send a first class ticket through. The entire map was split into three sections, and the width of each section was variable, but it obviously had to overlap. The height of the engraving was fixed to the y-axis of the Niji Max, which was 810mm. I then deleted the names that went across the boundary of the engraving area, and then that would be picked up in the next section. I grouped the countries into local regions, and then imported those into Lightburn. I'm using the Niji E40 laser, which is designed for engraving, though I have also had success with cutting too, if you check out this video. The settings were 4,000 millimeters per minute at 60% power with no air assist. I checked the direction of the engraving and matched that to the overall time of the job. And the entire engraving of the plywood was going to take about 12 hours. All the local regions that were grouped together were imported as separate layers. Uh, given that I couldn't hang around for four to six hours at a time, uh, engraving separate layers was then very useful. And when the laptop started playing up, it became really important to actually be present. Obviously, I'm not going to be showing you the full 12 hours of laser engraving, and I'll be playing the footage at different speeds to make the video more palatable. There were a lot of issues to solve along the way, including the failing laptop, a sleepy USB port, an oversensitive power socket, and a lot of fouling across the piece as well as the laser module itself. 
Without the air assist, I needed to remove a lot of carbonized deposits. But when I used the air assist, the engraved finish almost looked like it was a annealed carbon surface, rather than say that branding iron look. I mean, ultimately it just wasn't very attractive. So I had to go with no air assist and a lot more clearing up. Moving the plywood was straightforward. Aligning to the next section with the E40 module was not. Lightburn has a useful setting for targeting. However, the E40 laser module has a blocky style housing and is suspended close to the surface, which makes viewing the laser dot onto the targets quite difficult, especially from oblique angles. So sometimes you just have to get the old fashioned ruler out and double check the distances manually. In this design, the largest text of Russia had to be split into two parts and then focused on engraving Europe and Africa. With 0.1mm line intervals, this engraving was going to take a long time. Now I was wearing a respirator and eye protection and the phone was doing all the filming, so I spent a lot of time twiddling my thumbs. I did have an extractor going, but it's quite underpowered if not connected to a small enclosure. Nonetheless, with the laser chirping away, at least I had some company, and the evolving map made it worthwhile. This is a far simpler project for a first time attempt at engraving an outsized material, and I'm sure I will try a photo or an image set to this type of scale someday soon, at least once I get some more confidence with this system. I wanted to show the amount of debris on the laser module housing, and in a previous video I showed how to clean up the lens protective cover. Now of course in this project I think the intervals for cleaning should be a lot more regular, uh, but I do also assume that this is a standard response for a laser system and must depend on the type of material being engraved. It was time again for some major tectonic movement and the first serious headache was this overlap. I got the target set up as best as I could and yet the continuation of the name Russia was actually out of alignment. I could not figure out why the S's were fine at the base but not at the top. I put down blue tape and engraved it at very low power, then double checked all the physical measurements and the alignment or misalignment became quite apparent. And it was only when I went back to the GIMP software and checked the font, it turned out that the letters it was producing didn't actually have equal heights, at least not for when it was blown up to 500 font size. With this project, I was a little excited to try something I'd not seen before, but it turned out that there are a couple of YouTube videos that have featured oversized engraving, and some with lengths up to two meters. So feeling a little deflated at only finding them during the editing of the video, I of course have put a pertinent link in the comments below. Question, what would you later engrave onto a plywood sheet this size? One place I would love to see before I die would be Fiji, and I think that's mainly because of the videos I've seen of the world's toughest race. Let me know in the comments below what is the most beautiful place on earth for you, and why. For me, I would say that would be Malaysia and Okinawa. They both hold a very special attraction for me. One for the holiday I spent with my family, and the other because I went snorkeling at a conference trip during winter. The large frame of the Niji 3 Max was definitely a bonus for this type of engraving project. But being able to see the laser beam for the target alignment would be a real help. With the engraving complete, it's now time to spot the spelling mistake. And yes, my dog was mightily impressed with the final project. I would definitely want a quicker system to do this engraving. But for a hobbyist machine using a diode laser module, I was really happy with the results. Lucy, what's your favourite country? I think most of us would agree with that. Thank you so much for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you found it useful. And don't forget to leave a comment. I do respond to them all, unless they're rude and they just get deleted. 
hopefully catch you next time. Take care.